so I've had my Space Black iPhone 14 Pro for around 6 months now. In this video we're going to discuss the positives and negatives I've experienced whilst using this device on a daily basis. We'll also take a look at the wear and tear on both the phone and the Apple cases I've been using. Let's start with the screen which has been a definite positive. The image quality is fantastic with those awesome OLED blacks and contrast levels. The screen brightness of this phone is outstanding and can hit up to a crazy peak of 2000 nits. Performance has been excellent. The A16 chip is a monster and will easily power any app or game of your choosing. I've not picked up any marks or scratches on the display, but I have used the Spigen screen protector from day one. These are the only screen protectors I use and come with an easy to use fitting system to make sure it's perfectly aligned. I've left a link in the description to the exact model for the iPhone 14 Pro. What hasn't been so positive is the umber brown leather case I got from Apple. I know you expect leather to wear a little, but mine already has lots of marks and dents. This is pretty disappointing as I'm careful with my phone and only really rest it on my desk or stand. However, I've just picked up this sky blue silicon case from the Apple Spring Color collection. I'm liking the more vibrant look. I think it goes nicely with the space black phone, so hopefully this case will hold up a little better over time. I do keep my phone in a case the vast majority of the time, so I've not picked up any scratches on the back or edges of the phone. The camera bump and lenses do seem to attract a lot of dust and particles, so I normally wipe this area down every other day to try and maintain a clean look. The always on display has been a welcome addition, being able to just glance at your phone to get the time or check a notification. I haven't noticed any real impact on battery life or had any issues with burning on the OLED screen. However, if you have any concerns with this feature, you can always turn it off. The Dynamic Island is a neat feature that I was really impressed with at first, but to be honest, I don't really use it a great deal. This feature is really at its best when displaying real-time information like maps or timers. Overall, I think Dynamic Island will improve over time, as more widespread third-party app support comes available. For both photo and video, I found the camera system to offer mixed results. If you shoot RAW photos, the 48 megapixel camera offers excellent detail and dynamic range, so you can get some really nice edits. The negative of this is the huge file sizes. If you just want to shoot regular JPEGs, then it's more complicated. While you mostly get good results, sometimes the colors look a little off, and sometimes the image looks over-processed. It's a similar story for video. You can get great results if you shoot ProRes and grade your footage, but if you're just shooting regular video, the results can at times be underwhelming. Now don't get me wrong, overall it's still a great camera system, but I'd like to see Apple fine tune their image processing and achieve a more natural and consistent look. Battery life has honestly been slightly disappointing with the 14 Pro. For light use it will last a day, but if you're a medium to heavy user, you will need to recharge before your day is done. This isn't a big deal for me as I work from home and can charge from my desk. However, if you're someone who's out working all day, you might want to consider stepping up to the 14 Pro Max for the extra battery life that it offers. In terms of battery health, it's still at 100% after 6 months, so I have no worries there. So to conclude, is the iPhone 14 Pro really worth it? Whilst it's a powerful feature-packed device, if you have a recent iPhone, I wouldn't say any of the new features are absolute must-haves. So if you already own an iPhone 12 or 13 Pro, then it probably isn't worth buying. However, if you have an older iPhone 10 or 11, then it becomes a far more compelling purchase, with big upgrades to most key aspects of the device. Overall, despite some minor irritations with the battery and camera, I'm more than happy with the iPhone 14 Pro. I upgraded from the 10R, so it's been a huge improvement for me. Hopefully it will be the only phone I need for the next few years. That's a wrap for this video. I hope it helped you out. I've been Tom Hyphen. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching.